Today we take a look at my most broken build to date, a build I am calling the Celestial Sentinel. Let's get to it. Are you sick and tired of being hit by your opponents? Do you wish there was a way that you could not be hit and do damage to them at the same time? Well, guess what? Now you can. With today's absolutely insane build called the Celestial Sentinel, this build specializes in not getting hit and punishing your enemy for not hitting you. How does it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's start off with taking a look at the items as they are the core of the build. Beginning with all of the items that you can find in Act 1, which is a majority of them. First off, we have the Holy Lance Helm. This helm has a special ability called Smite the Graceless. It states that creatures who miss their attack rolls against the wearer must make a dexterity saving throw or take 1 to 4 radiant damage. It also gives you a plus 1 to constitution saving throws. Next, we have our chest piece, which is the Luminous Armor. It's medium armor. It has the ability Radiating Shockwave, which states when the wearer deals radiant damage, damage, they cause a radiant shockwave. Radiating shockwave affects anybody within a 10 foot radius and it applies a, a single stack of radiating orb. Next we have the boots of the stormy clamor. It has the special ability arcane and confla blah blah whatever that word is, which states that when the wearer inflicts a condition upon a hostile creature, they also inflict two turns of reverberation. Just in case you are not familiar with it, reverberation applies applies a negative one penalty to dexterity, strength, and constitution saving throws per turn applied on the target. It also has the ability that when five or more turns are applied to the target, the target takes one to four thunder damage and must succeed a DC 10 constitution saving throw or fall prone. For the necklace, we have the periapt of wound closure, which has the ability wound closure when downed automatically stabilize at the start of your turn. It also has has potent healing, which maximizes the number of hit points restored. So what this does is whatever the max HP you can get when doing a healing roll, you will get that max HP every time. On to the weapons, we are going to have two weapons as this is a dual wield build. The first one is the Shining Staver of Skulls. This deals one to four bludgeoning damage and one to four radiant damage. It also has the light ability on it, meaning that it is always lit up, meaning you are are always bathed in light and anything that is in melee range of you is also bathed in light. This will come in handy later. The other weapon we are using is Blood of Lathander. This has Lathander's Blessing. Once per long rest, when your hit points are reduced to zero, you regain 2 to 12 HP and allies within 9 meters also regain 1 to 6 HP. As we have the Wound Closure ability, that means we will automatically heal for 12 HP. It also has Lathander's Light, which states that it sheds holy light in a six meter radius. In combat, fiends and undead standing in the light are blinded unless they succeed a constitution saving throw. When a target is blinded, it's easier for you to hit them and harder for them to hit you. It also gives you the sunbeam ability, which is a level six evocation spell that deals radiant damage. That's all of the items that you will be able to get from act one. The rest of them are found in act two. So let's start with taking a look at those in no particular order, starting with the Luminous Gloves. They have the ability called Radiating Orb Gloves. It states when the wearer deals radiant damage, the target receives one turn of Radiating Orb. They also give us a plus one bonus to strength saving throws. Then we have the Callous Glow Ring. It has Callous Glow ability, which states the wearer deals an additional two points of damage against creatures that are illuminated. Because of our weapons, everything that is within melee range of us will be illuminated, meaning that we will always do an additional two points of damage with each hit. And on top of that, that damage is radiant damage. It doesn't state that it is, but when you proc it, you can clearly see that it is radiant damage and you can see it in the log as well. Then we have the Coruscation Ring. I guess that's how you pronounce that. No idea, which has Arcane Radiance ability. Arcane Radiance states that when the wearer deals spell damage while illuminated by a light source, we are always illuminated by a light source. They also inflict Radiating Orb upon the target for two turns. And last but not least, we have the Vivacious Cloak, which has the ability Arcane Vivaciousness, which states that you gain eight temporary hit points after casting a spell while in melee. So just in case it hasn't been made clear yet, let me explain what happens here because this build is absolutely insane. First off, we have the Helmet, which when a creature misses us, it takes Radiant Damage. Now what happens when we deal Radiant Damage? When we deal Radiant Damage, we proc the Radiant Shockwave, stacking an orb on the target 
target. We also proc the orb gloves, which stacks a radiating orb on the target. We also proc our ring, which also stacks two orbs on the target. Every stack of radiant orb a target has is one less that they can roll when they roll to attack us. This means the more stacks of radiating orb they have, the harder it is for them to hit us. Every time they miss us, they get more stacks of radiant orb. When we deal damage, they get more stacks of radiant orb. And it creates a feedback loop that makes it so that no matter what they do, it's harder for them to hit us to the point where it's almost impossible if they survive long enough. And we'll explain that here in a second. It makes it to a point where it's almost impossible for them to actually ever hit us, no matter what they roll. And now here's the really fun part that you may have missed. Our boots that state that whenever we inflict a condition upon a hostile creature, they are inflicted with two turns of reverberation. Every single time one of our things procs to put radiant orb on a target is considered inflicting a condition upon the target, which stacks the reverberation like crazy. So you end up with a situation of enemies that are trying to hit you and start to miss to hit you, keep missing to hit you, can't stop missing to hit you, and every time they miss, they take reverberation stacks, which compound really quickly, which cause one to four thunder damage, which causes them to have a chance to fall prone. And on top of that, they are also taking one to four radiant damage continuously over and over and over again. And it is absolutely hilarious to watch. Now let's talk about how to level the build because it kicks in at level five and it's really easy. And then from there, it gets even better as you continue to level. So we're going to choose cleric as our starting class and pick whatever cantrips you want to pick here. It doesn't really matter. Although I would suggest getting sacred flame as it does do radiant damage. And the more radiant damage we can do, the better. For our subclass, we're going with the light domain. This gets us the light cantrip and it also gets us the warding flares ability, which states that we can shield ourselves with divine light using our reaction to impose disadvantage on an attacker, possibly causing them to miss. And we all know what happens when a target misses us. From there, we are going to go 16 into strength, 14 into dexterity, 12 into constitution and 16 into wisdom. I know that's rather low on the constitution, but we need that extra dexterity for high armor. High armor is very important for this build. We need those initial misses to get the ball rolling, if you will. So having high dexterity is very important here. And it gets to a point where we don't ever really get hit. And when we do get hit, it's only once or twice during the initial start of the combat until those orbs start to stack on top of a target. So it doesn't really make much use for us to have high constitution. And because we'll have the wound closure amulet, we can heal through any damage that we take with just one or two potions. And it could even be low level potions because we're always getting the max. Or we can just heal ourselves with one of our healing spells because it doesn't really matter that much. We're not going to need all those other spell slots that we have for very much stuff. At level four, we are going to pick dual wielder. And the reason we are picking this is so that we can equip that secondary mace as well as get that bonus to our armor. Remember the armor that we're wearing is medium armor and we need to get that armor class up as high as we can possibly get it. When it's all said and done without any buffs, you should be at 19 AC. From there, we're going to toss one more into cleric and that is specifically so we can get spirit guardians because spirit guardians is our, oh, it's going down. Let's bust out everything we got. You cast spirit guardians and everything around you takes massive amounts of damage, can't hit you, gets tons of stacks on it because you're doing so much radiant damage and stacking all of the orbs and stacking the reverberation as well. And you just become an absolute destroying machine. The sad part is, is we're only going to end up with two slots for being able to cast it. So you're only going to get to cast it twice per long rest. So you want to save it until you absolutely need it. But this is the main reason we are starting with cleric. Well, spirit guardians and the warding flares. After level five, we are going to make the shift to fighter and we are going to stick with fighter for the rest of our leveling. For our fighting style, we are going to choose a defense because we desperately need that additional armor point. At level eight, you want to pick the battle master. And from here, I would pick the repost. This allows us to attack on a target's miss, which is super handy because they're always going to be missing, as well as evasive footwork. I would always start a match off when it is your turn with evasive footwork. This puts disadvantage on anybody that is trying to attack you. It's only for a single turn, but really in most cases, a single turn is all you need. And then last but not least, sweeping attack because attacking multiple enemies at one time applies a radiant orb to all of those enemies and it's just good times. At level nine, we get our next feat. We're going to go with ability improvements 
and we are going to pump strength up by two. At level 11, we get another feat point. We're going to put this into ability improvements as well, and we are going to take our strength to 20. You don't have to attack with this build, as you've seen from a bunch of the footage as I was going through the item list, but it is handy to be able to hit hard when we do, and you will hit very hard. At level 12, we get to pick two more maneuvers. I would go with disarming strike as well as menacing attack. Disarming strike is going to make it so that they can't attack us with a weapon, which really doesn't matter anyway, but it's fun to be able to knock weapons out of some things hands. And menacing attack has a chance to frighten the enemy and your chances are going to be higher because in most cases they're going to have reverberation on them, which is going to make it harder for them to make their saving throws, which is going to put them at disadvantage when trying to attack you if they are frightened and it's going to do an additional 1d8 damage to the target. And that's pretty much it for this build. It's a super simple build that just relies on a specific set of extremely broken items. Now there's a few things to keep in mind here. So the only thing that can stack infinite radiating orbs according to the wiki's information is the chest piece. Now this isn't too big of a deal because the chest piece states that anytime we do radiant damage we stack one stack but what happens here is you'll stack a bunch of stacks really quickly and then they'll slow down a little bit and you won't stack them quite as fast but those initial stacks are more than enough to give the target a very high chance to miss initiating the feedback loop. The other thing to keep in mind as I stated you don't want to use spirit guardians unless you're kind of in a bad situation or your whole party is in a bad situation. This build does actually or could actually work as a solo build however if you do this as a solo build I would highly recommend not using blood of Lathander and instead using the shattered flail and that is because when you get downed if you're the only one it can trigger jail scenes or trigger you being put in jail from my testing if there's a party there or a party member the fight will continue giving you the ability to recover but when I was downed being solo it just put me in jail after attacking the guards and didn't give the mace a chance to trigger so if you use the flail you're going to be healing constantly every time you get to attack you're going to be healing for the max amount and you're going to get to attack twice with it that means every time it's your turn you're going to get 12 hp back in very few cases are you going to take enough damage in a single turn to be downed before you have a chance to heal that damage back and if you end up going mad you're not going to attack any party members you're just going to continue to attack the enemy so the flail doesn't really have any negative side effects in that sense so if you're going solo i would swap the blood of lathander out for that put it in your main hand and the other weapon that does the radiant damage in your offhand that way you can attack with the flail twice every turn one other thing you need to keep in mind is your main weakness for this build is magic damage so if you are running solo i would advise to go get a hireling and use warding bond on your character to reduce any magic damage that you take and focus down to anyone who's dealing magic damage first you want to make them a main priority don't even be afraid of running past people triggering attacks of opportunity because in most every case they are going to miss you and just get a stack of radiating orb or fall to the ground so zone out your mages first because they are your biggest threat other than that the build is super easy to play and hilarious to play you just run into battle everybody constantly misses you can't hit you and is just taking massive amounts of radiant damage and thunder damage and falling to the ground all right that's gonna wrap it up for this one hopefully you found this video helpful and informational if you did please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when i upload other Baldur's gate 3 videos and if you're looking for another awesome build guide you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now i want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free you all are absolutely amazing people if you would like to become an official channel supporter check out the links in the description below if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and share your support until next time thanks for watching